Perfect. So yeah, first of all, thank you for taking time to talk with me. Really enjoyed the film. Thank you. Yeah. So you might be best known for your more comedic roles like Princess Bride and my personal favorite Robin Hood Men in Tights, but you also do some lovely dramatic work like you do in Sweetwater. What draws you to these more serious types of roles? Well, the criteria for me usually, Sean, is is first off, if it's a subject matter that has any cultural or social or historical significance to it. And this one seemed to check every box on that level. And also, if it's a story that I didn't know about, uh, which I had no clue about at Sweetwater Clifton. Um, and then if it's not, if it's a role that 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 scares me a little, because I, I always like to a challenge. Yeah. So those were the, the criteria that really drew me to the project. And of course, the wonderful ensemble of people involved, you know, the filmmakers and the actors. So I was, I, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned that ensemble, um, like a basketball game is kind of a team sport, you know, right. making a film is an ensemble practice. What was it like working as part of this, you know, massively talented ensemble? It is a team. It's a team sport. Um, and it's all about figuring out how to work together to achieve the same goal. And, uh, you know, this film, we're lucky in the entertainment industry if we get a chance mostly to entertain, but also educate. And if we can do both and do it in a way that people don't feel like they're being hit over the head, I think it's a good thing. You know, especially when we're dealing with a subject matter that's so important and, and and relevant today, you know? Yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, what do you hope that audiences will take away from learning about the story of Sweetwater Clifton? I think that they'll learn about a, a, a guy who was a pioneer and changed basketball as we know it. Um, and, you know, I spoke, I had the good fortune to, to meet Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and he told me that, you know, without Sweetwater, he, he there would be no Kareem. There would be no Magic Johnson. There would be no Michael Jordan. These guys all pay homage to him as being the pioneer, the guy who changed the game. And the fact that that's, that Nat Sweetwater Clifton is not a household name is, to me, a, a, it's a crime. And so we're hoping to change that. Yeah, absolutely. And I know you mentioned you didn't uh, have a lot of familiarity with uh, Nat Clifton's story before the movie, but yeah. how much familiarity did you have with, you know, the sport of basketball before making Sweetwater? Uh, I, it's funny enough, I saw I, I, I saw my first basketball game because I grew up in England. And there, there wasn't basketball in, in right. England in the 60s at all. I witnessed my first basketball game in this city, in Manhattan, in 1972. I saw the Harlem Globetrotters at Madison Square Garden. So I think in a strange way, I've come full circle here. You know, uh, some, some, you know, uh, yeah, 50 absolutely. years later or so, you know, it's <laughs> extraordinary that, that, that I'm now playing the manager and the president of, of, of Madison Square Garden and the owner of the Knickerbockers who, who signed someone from the Globetrotters. It's, it's, it's you know, wonderful kismet. Yeah, absolutely. And I think another thing that's really unique about your role in this film that brings it full circle is that the last time you were in a sports movie was Days of Thunder, where you played a rookie athlete. And now in Sweetwater, you're playing the owner and the president of the Knicks. Um, that's another thing that was kind of like a full circle in your career. What was it like coming full circle in that way? Uh, I always find myself... Wonderfully surprised by by the, the 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 happenstance of my life that ends up being coincidental. Yeah, uh, I, I believe that these things really that aren't coincidences. I think that's a word we invented to explain things we don't understand. You know, um, and so uh, there's a reason I was at the garden watching the Globetrotters in '72. I I, I have to believe that. You know. Yeah, absolutely. 
And um, I think from, you know, a more technical level, uh, Ned Irish was a very private man in that there's not a ton of yeah. background information available on him. Right. How did right. you go about the research process with there being well, so Well, a lot of, you know, he was a, a larger than life character, Sean. So a lot of people, you know, he had a lot of contemporaries who spoke about him and in interviews and, and, you know, not a lot of footage of him, but there were a lot of friends and colleagues and, and even people who weren't fans of, of uh, Ned Irish, who who were happy to talk to the press, so I had plenty to work with there. And what I really discovered was that he he might have had a tough exterior, but he was a big softy inside. Um, I think also I learned that he was the color he was really interested in wasn't wasn't about black or white. He was really about green. Yeah, it was all about making money. And for him, uh, initially, it was about the the economics of of signing. Sweetwater, and and then it wasn't until Lapchick worked on it, and then he met Sweetwater himself that he realized and watched him play. He realized there was more to this guy than than just the idea of of, of signing somebody who happened to be a, a different color. And he realized the guy was passionate about the game and, and played really well. I mean, extraordinary. Um, and so he realized that yes. It would change basketball. But he also realized he would make a lot of money out of it. So it was. It was. I think both those criteria were important for for Ned. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, going a little bit back to your career, um, even in your dramatic roles, there's a lot of versatility in what you do with your roles. I mean, just this year, you've Thank been you. in two biopics with Sweetwater and Blackberry, uh, and yeah. I think that the roles are very different from one another. Um, how yeah. do you approach all of these roles in a unique way? Well, I try to find obviously uh, uh, the, the human quality, uh, something that's identifiable. Um, I find out. I try to work on what their weaknesses are, what their hopes and dreams are, what their fears are, um, what their goals are. All those things. I, I kind of compile a list. I work with the director uh, and compiling a, a sort of a, a, a database, if you will, for me to work with. Uh, and that gives me the parameters that that allow me to fly around and yeah 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 absolutely and then um uh, what do you think at least personally speaking for you is the most inspiring thing about the story of sweetwater clifton well the most inspiring thing was the fact that he changed basketball as we know it and the fact that he's not a well-known figure is is to me a crime because anybody who changes a sport it should be there should be statues to this person yeah and and to me that's that's a i don't understand it the fact that it took martin gigi our director 28 years to get this project off the ground tells you about the kind of resistance that he was up against and why we you know we can only speculate but i'm sure you and i can come up with some answers but it's 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 wrong and and here we are Thank goodness, 28 years later with Martin's, Martin's perseverance, and we're telling this story. And hopefully uh, we get to not only entertain, but educate at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, one of the special things about this film is also one of the special things about the Globetrotters. And that it's that, you know, it's a very entertaining film that appeals beyond sports fans. Um, what do you hope that people who aren't as big of a fan of basketball will take away from this film and enjoy this film? Well, uh, you know, I think obviously it's rooting for the underdog. I think all great sports movies have that theme to it. Yeah. Um, and in this case, the underdog was uh, we're dealing with, a, with the theme of racism. Yeah. In a sports where it seems unbelievable today, you know, where, where professional sports have basically dominated by 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 people of color but uh, here's a time where where you know we had segregation and you know for kids today it's hard for them to fathom that so if we can you know especially when we have numerous states across the country now that are trying to limit african-american studies uh, and thank goodness for the entertainment industry where we can get a chance to 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 to, to explore these 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 historical uh, stories and 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 both entertain and educate at the same time. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I hope 
I hope that audiences are just as moved by this as as you and I were. And oh, thank uh, you, Sean. Thank you again for taking time to talk with me. And I look forward to seeing what you do next. Thank you so much. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Have a great day. You too.